So what is NetSuite for the wholesale distribution market? <clears throat> NetSuite is a cloud-based business application which is built around a central core data model. The model, um, the, the, the central data model um, is designed to remain simple. So surrounding the core model is the advanced modules that could be applied to various industries. So in the case of wholesale distribution, we, you would add some of the warehouse and inventory management features that allow wholesale distributors to import products and, and apply landing costs, etc. The application is role-based and a user can have one or many roles associated to them. Those roles can be tied to certain areas of the product or can cover across the product. But they also uh, uh, impose the, the security rules that that role must follow. These roles do not have to be associated to internal users only. You can open up roles to customers and vendors and partners so that they can have access to various parts of the system. And you can also open it up to third party applications through the publicized API. As a modern cloud solution, NetSuite is extremely flexible. And one of the advantages of the NetSuite solution is the Suite Cloud Platform. This is an area that customers don't typically see, but it allows you to personalize uh, the application to meet your specific needs. There are various components to the Suite Cloud Platform, the first being Suite Builder. Suite Builder is a utility that your system administrators will be able to use to add additional fields, columns, uh, forms, reports, etc., to customize the solution to meet your needs. Suite Bundler allows you to share that information through the NetSuite repository and also download from the repository into your account. SuiteFlow is the NetSuite native workflow, and the workflow engine can be used to drive a business process, but can also be used to change the behavior of screens or, or reports um, according to your defined process. There's also Suite Analytics, which allows you and your user community to create multiple areas of business intelligence, whether they be KPIs, trend reports, custom reports, um, or specific searches. And finally, for the technical users amongst your team, there is Suite Script and Suite Talk. Uh, Suite Script is the NetSuite native Java scripting, and Suite Talk is web services. All of these modifications that you or your business partners make to the NetSuite do not prevent the application from being upgraded as NetSuite upgrades the system twice a year for all customers worldwide. As a vendor, NetSuite focuses in key industries. One of the strongest industries for NetSuite is NetSuite for wholesale distributors. The, distribution, the wholesale distribution solution footprint can extend as your business evolves. Um, so you could start with uh, financials and CRM and order management and basic inventory, and then as your business requirements change, add additional areas such as advanced procurement or warehouse management, um, advanced financials um, through to um, comprehensive business intelligence. So let's have a quick demonstration of NetSuite. As I said, I'm going to take you through the dashboard. We'll then look at the item master, and then we'll go through procurement and sales order process, finally ending with reporting. So here we are within the NetSuite solution. And as you can see, I'm logged in as the CEO of the company, um, but I have many roles that can be associated to me. As a, a CEO, a lot of the information that's presented to me on my dashboard is um, statistics across the performance of the entire business. How the dashboard is presented to me is completely up to me to define. If I want, I can drag and drop portlets around so that I can change my dashboard on the fly. Um, I may want to interact with some of the data that's being presented to me and have that presented in slightly different format and I can view the information. Um, I can, can have multiple areas that, that are key to me, various projections and financial ratios that, that 
I'm tracking. The data that's presented to me on my dashboard is presented in real time. So if I want to, I can drill through a specific KPI to see the underlying data that's making up that information. Should I wish, I can drill down even further on specific areas. So now I'm looking at customer transactions. And if I want to, I can go even further and open up a specific transaction to see exactly what, what's been sold on that record. I don't have to stop there. If I want, I can drill across the database to start looking at the customer record. And now looking at the customer record, we can see there's a whole raft of information that's also stored on the customer. So we can see various activities that have been carried out by members of my team. I can also see messages that may have been sent backwards and forwards between us and the customer. Under the sales area, I can see various trans, uh, full transactions that have been generated. I can also look at sales opportunities that may be in process. One of the areas that might be really key for us as a business is to look at the items that have been purchased by this customer over time. So I can see all of the information that uh, they have purchased, which could be used, useful for the marketing team to generate marketing campaigns based on specific product category. I can also, if I look under the financial area, I can also see that, that we can associate specific price levels to a customer, but if I want to, I can also create group pricing and item pricing so that we can have a comprehensive pricing model associated to each type of customer that I use. If I am using the marketing area of next week's CRM, then I can see various campaigns that the customer may have been, uh, may have received. I can also see whether they've opted in or opted out based on our uh, subscription opt-in model. I can see their address, and if I want to, I can also drill through that and go out into the public domain to see exactly where this customer is located. And if I was a salesperson, then maybe I can track various meetings in certain areas. Now, as I mentioned, all of this information can be um, modified. So if there are certain air pieces of information you must capture, you can add that information. Uh, alternatively, if there's things on that screen you don't need, these can be removed. Um, and these are the tasks that your system administrators can carry out very easily. But customers, as with a lot of records within NetSuite, do have a, uh, a lot of information that can be captured against them. So wherever you see this little icon, you can dynamically generate a dashboard on the fly based on that record. And now the system will um, pre present the KPIs for the customer, give you a snapshot of the customer information, etc. Then when I return back to my home dashboard, that has, we're back to where we started from. Under each of the, the areas, this is the menu path, and under each of these areas, I can have additional dashboards. So if I was to go into the board metrics, now you can see everything I'm looking at is very much looking at ratios and um, key performance indicators across the business. So users can have as many different dashboards as, the, as they see fit. If I was to change roles and go and look at the CFO, then ultimately the CFO's dashboard is gonna be very much financial um, centric. So, um, So the, the CFO's dashboard, as, as mentioned, is very financial centric. So the KPIs are across the entire financials area. Um, as this system is a multi-subsidiary system, um, currently I am, as the CFO, looking at information across the entire business. But if I want to just look at one of the subsidiaries, I can select on the subsidiary hierarchy just that company, and my portlets will start re um, creating based on that subsidiary and also the subsidiary's currency. If I bring it back to the parent, then I will be looking at the balances across the entire business again. As with the CEO, um, if I wanted other dashboards for thing, different areas of financials for say receivables or payables, then again I can create a dashboard quickly and easily. If I come back to my main dashboard. In each of these areas, I can choose to go and personalize, and I can add from a whole raft of information, maybe just adding my calendar um, to my portlet, 
now to my port, uh, dashboard and then if I want I can drag and drop that portlet around as to where I want it to, to appear. If I decide I no longer need it, I can then remove it from my dashboard. One final change um, is to go into the system administrator. As I mentioned, uh, there you can your users will be able to customize the application to meet your needs. So in the system administration function, this is where you can see all the list entities, uh, fields and forms that you can create. If you wanted to create a new field, it's very simple and easy to do. So I can go in and we put other stuff. Decide that's to apply to the customer. Go ahead and associate it to the main tab and then just save that field. Now what I can do, because I associated it with the customer, if I go and look at the customer and edit that particular customer record, we will see that that field is now visible on the customer itself. And we'll stop. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is have a quick look at the item record. Um, so that when we start to go through the processes, these the items will look quite familiar. So as we can see, we've got a number of items already in my recent record. So we'll go and review, first of all, this specific item. NetSuite itself supports inventory and non-inventory items and matrix items, but for today we'll just keep it as a simple inventory item. Some key information about the item, we've got the item uh, barcode, the item itself can have multiple units of measure so that you can stock um, the item in one unit of measure, sell it in another, purchase it in another, etc. Should you be buying these products from overseas, you can track landed costs, um, and if you have locations within your warehouse, you can set up bin control for the item so that you have to then specify where in the, the warehouse these items are located. And if I come further down, you will see that the item is available in multiple warehouses, uh, being a stock holding location. Here's uh, bin numbers that we've associated to some of the, the locations, um, and if we want preferred vendors as well. Should you want the system to automatically assist with reordering, then you can use reorder point planning, whether it be manually, or manual or automatically calculated, and this can apply to each of the um, locations that the item is assigned to. Come back up here, as mentioned, you can have multiple price levels uh, for different customers. So under the pricing area, we can specify multiple currencies that we trade in, and each one can have, you can have multiple price levels that can be associated to the customer, so that when the transactions are created, we know the right price to, to be calculated. Okay, so that's the, the item record. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through a procurement, procure to pay process and then an, a sales order to, to fulfillment process. So if we, we could run through the transactions and go ahead and create a new purchase order from here, but I can also go to recent records and open up a previously entered purchase order and then create a copy of that to save time in in entering data. So if I just go under the actions, I can go ahead and copy this purchase order um, and start a fresh one. So it's pulled through the, the supplier, it's pulled through the location of the purchase order, the purchase order is currently pending approval, and these are the items that I wish to purchase. I can add more, I can add multiples, um, but for today we'll just keep it very simple. So if I save that purchase order, it will still be pending approval, and I will need to, to pass that through approval. As I am the administrator, I can go ahead and automatically uh, approve my own records, but if I was a user, this may have to go to my manager or to central purchasing or however your approval hierarchy works. So now the purchase order is approved. You can see the button for receiving has been highlighted. 
I could, as a warehouse person, go ahead and look at orders awaiting receipt. Um, but as I have complete access here, I can just simply go ahead and generate the receipt once the goods have arrived in the warehouse. So this has pulled through the items, assumed that we received everything, I could amend those. Um, if I want to put landed cost per line, I can do. Alternatively, I can switch that off and put landed across, across the receipt. But again, we'll just stick with, with the items we've got. And I can go ahead and save that and not book the landed costs. So this will receipt the items into stock. Um, and if I was to come back to um, the purchase order, um, we will see that the purchase order has now now pending billing, and we can see we have received the items. So now I can go ahead and generate or enter the accounts payable invoice once the supplier has sent me the invoice. So here's the purchase bill. I can put in the invoice number and select the details and save that. And then that can be paid on our next payment run. Okay. So as I mentioned, NetSuite is a fully integrated solution. So having created that transaction, I, you can see that the accounting distributions have been created automatically based on me saving that accounts payable um, entry. So there we've seen the purchase order through to the receipt process. Um, if I was to um, open up the item record, then the, item, the, the additional items would have been receipted. Now what we can do is go through the reverse and look at a sales order to fulfillment process. So again, if I look at recent records, I can open up one of my previous sales orders. And again, we can see the same items. So I can copy that item in the same way as I did the purchase order to create a new sales order. NetSuite also allows you to do memorized transactions, so if you have customers that have regular orders, uh, monthly or quarterly, you can memorize them and have the system automatically generate them. Should I decide that I don't want to, or the customer doesn't want that item, I can remove that and have that just as a one-line sales order. You've also got the upsell manager, which will allow you to look at alternatives that you can sell to a customer. NetSuite will build the correlation of these items based on sales history. Um, but again, to keep things simple, we'll just create a simple sales order for, for here. So now I can, can save that sales order. And as with the um, purchase order, we have imposed an approval hierarchy. But again, I as the user can approve that sales order for release. You can see it's also picking up now that the sales order is ready for fulfillment and alternatively if I was a warehouse manager or an inventory manager I would see that sales order as awaiting fulfillment. But for now we'll just go ahead and fulfill that sales order. NetSuite supports the picking, packing and shipping process independently of each other. You could run it just as one step or for organizations where you have the various stages in the warehouse, you can take it through each step. But for today, we'll say, as soon as I save, the goods have been shipped. See that we've only ordered um, the one um, and we have 39 available. So if I go ahead and save that fulfillment, And then if I go back to the sales order, we can now see that 
it's pending billing, I can either run the billing process directly within the, the, the record itself, or I can go and run it through um, the billing process. If I look at the sales order, I can see related records, and you can see the item fulfillment that has been tagged to the sales order. Okay, so briefly we've seen a couple of business processes, and I want to end today with just um, showing how easy it is to modify um, some of the reports. NetSuite offers over 200 reports as standard, and if the users have the right response, uh, access, they can go ahead and modify these. So if I was to go ahead and look at the AR, uh, sorry, the AP agent report, we will see all um, AP for this particular subsidiary. If I want to bring it to the parent, oops, sorry, the parent have consolidated, then I will see AP across all of the, the business. And um, if you look at this report and you think this is almost what we want, there's our invoice, you could choose to go ahead and customize the report and say, well, I need to add additional columns. So I could open up the open payables option and maybe add the age. And if I want, drag that around. And then I can go ahead and preview the modification I've created. And with a couple of clicks, I have created a new report with the age. And if we were to work our way through, we can see that um, our item is there and I can still drill through the reports uh, as I did at the very beginning. Okay, so that was a very quick demonstration of the power that is the NetSuite solution and how it can be applied to requirements of wholesale distributors. We started with the dashboard, we looked at the item master and how reordering and how inventory and bin control can be imposed along with landed costs. Then we took a simple process of purchasing an item through to receipt and then subsequently selling selling the, those items. And finally, modified a simple report. So hopefully that's given you an insight into the power that is NetSuite and you can see how this could potentially benefit your organization.